Fly.io now has GPU machines. This means you can run AI workloads and anything that requires a GPU on Fly. If you want to get started with that, hop on the waitlist. I'll link that in the video notes. Before we begin seeing how to use a Fly GPU machine, I just want to uh, tell you a few things. It's only available in a few regions. At the time I record this video, the Chicago region, ORD, has the most capacity for Fly GPUs. There's two flavors of GPUs we are going to uh, have available right now. They are NVIDIA A100s, and we have a 40 gigabyte or an 80 gigabyte size of GPU, right? That's uh, memory on the GPU itself. What we're going to do is spin up an instance of the Whisper web service. This builds on top of OpenAI's Whisper audio transcription models and uh, provides a web API on top of it. So we're going to see two things. One, we're going to create a uh, Fly GPU using Fly CTL, the command line tool. And two, we're going to see how to automate the creation of a Fly machine using the API. Let's go ahead and dive in on that. The first thing I'm going to do is just define a variable app name. We're going to call this uh, app wispy API, and then we can use that variable in a few different commands. I'm going to do fly apps create, um, and I just call it app name, right? It's going to be called wispy API. This is the app that's just going to house the machines that we are going to spin up. And in this case, I'm going to use an organization fly GPUs, which is the organization I have that has GPUs enabled on the account. The next thing we're going to do is create a volume. The reason we create a volume is because we want to store uh, AI's large model files on the volume so that every time we spin up a machine, we don't have to re-download the model files. These are pretty big. We don't really want to just build them into a Docker image because uh, moving a huge Docker image around the internet is prone to failure. So uh, keeping the Docker image as small as possible, the Docker image used to create the machine is really nice. The Whisper web service also has its own base Docker image that we're going to use, and this way we don't have to build our own Docker image. Now, a uh, thing to note here is that volumes are created on a specific host. They're pinned to specific hosts. That means we want our volume to be created on a GPU host, because that's where we're going to spin up our machine. Now, the way to do that is to use this VM GPU kind flag, which hints at the type of CPU or GPU in this case. Uh, that the machine we are going to attach this volume to is going to be. So we're going to spin up a GPU machine. So we want to tell this volume to be created on a machine that supports the 40 gigabyte size uh, GPU machine that we are going to use in this video. So that is VM GPU kind A100, the NVIDIA type PCIe, 40 gigabytes. So let's go ahead and create that volume. This is exactly what we're going to say. Every volume is pinned to a specific host, blah, blah, blah. OK, that volume is created. I'm going to make a note of the volume ID because we need that for the next command. OK, I'm just going to paste a bunch of stuff for the next command, and we're going to see what's going on here. So we're going to do fly machines run, and then we're going to take the base image that is provided by the Whisper web service that supports GPUs, right? That's why the tag is latest GPU. This is on Docker Hub. And then we once again say the kind of server we are going to spin up, the kind of machine. That is a GPU machine of the A100 PCIe 40 gigabyte size, just like we did with the volume. Uh, we do a dash p flag here because it's going to be a web service that's available on the internet. So we do those flags that we use for um, creating fly volumes to tell Fly's proxy that it's going to accept uh, public facing connections on port 80 and 443 and route onto port 9000 internally where the Whisper web service is running. We're going to do it in the same region. I'm going to replace volume ID with the volume ID we just got up here. So I'll just copy and paste that. And we're going to mount that into the root.cache whisper directory where um, OpenAI's libraries saves the model files. And actually, this also does some pip install stuff. So uh, that gets saved into root.cache. So I'm actually going to mount this into the .cache uh, location so that it will uh, cache both pip, uh, Python packages, uh, those dependencies, and also the whisper models. OK, uh, two environment variables we're setting are ASIR model large to use the large Whisper model, which um, has better results. And ASR engine is faster Whisper, which is a uh, another open source project that speeds up uh, Whisper's uh, models a little bit. It's processing of audio files. And of course, we just pass it the app name. Uh, so this gets created within the app that we uh, have created for this use case. OK, so we can see it's uh, doing the things it needs to do, right? It's uh, finding the image. It's grabbing that image, downloading it, and starting a machine with that image. The other thing we can do is, let's export here in my new shell, uh, fly logs app name, dash a app name, and we can get the logs for this and follow along as it's creating the machine. 
Now, this Docker image is already seven gigabytes without us even doing anything. Fly GPU machines are allowed to make use of larger Docker image since most AI workloads require larger Docker based images to, uh, to spin up a new machine. So this is spinning up the image right now. It's downloading some files. I think it is even uh, as it spins up the Whisper web service, downloading the model files. So that happens on the first run. That'll get saved to the volume we have attached to this machine so that if we need to spin this up again, like stop it and restart it, then it will be able to spin up much quicker. Okay, this is spun up. Let's head back to our browser. Let's see if we can refresh this page and see our, our app yet. And we cannot. Now, why is that? That's because I didn't assign this machine any public IP addresses, so we can't reach the server just yet. So what I need to do is fly IPs, allocate, uh, I'll do a v6 first, that'll be to app name, and then we can allocate a v4 as well. And in the case of the v4, I'm going to do the shared flag since we don't need an, uh, a private IP address, a dedicated IP address to this machine. And then in just a second, we should be able to uh, reach our website. All right, and it's up and running. So what we're looking at here is an open AI spec. I think this is like a swagger interface, something like that. There is actually an open API spec that you can use if you want to like build an SDK or something towards this, but it's really a web API. And this is an interface that lets us interact with that web API. There is detect language, which will uh, detect the language from an audio file in ASR. Uh, that is the main endpoint you use to send an audio file and have it do some transcription. So if we try it out, we can uh, tell it to encode it, do the task of transcribe it versus translating. We could do a language, right? So uh, English in our case, an initial prompt if you want to add a prompt to help guide it in how it does some transcriptions, like uh, add special words or something like that. Tell it to add timestamps to the output. Um, we can do the output type. I usually like a JSON output and then we can upload an audio file. Now, in the interest of time, I'm not actually going to show you uploading a file. It, it works, I promise. But we're just going to go and move on to the next step, which is automating the creation of the exact same thing. Really quick, right before we see how to automate creating a Fly GPU machine, I just want to SSH into this machine and poke around a little bit. This will help you confirm that you actually are in a GPU machine and everything is running well. So we'll do fly SSH console with the app name here. I only have one machine running, so it's just going to default to this one machine because otherwise it would ask me what machine I want to connect to. And I am essentially SSH'd in now. So we inject some NVIDIA tooling into our fly GPU machines when they spin up. One provides this command NVIDIA-SMI, and that provides some output telling you about the um, GPU associated with this machine. Let me make this a little smaller so the output's a little bit better here. And it'll just tell you information about the GPU, including any processes running that are using the GPU. In this case, this Python process is using um, our GPU, right? And that is the uh, Whisper web service that is up and running. So uh, you can poke around other things in your machines as well, but this is the main thing to know about. Now we can go ahead and see how to automate generating a Fly GPU machine using the API. So what I'll show you here is just a bunch of curl requests, but you, of course, you could use whatever programming language you want to automate this. And it's the exact same two steps. We're going to create a volume and then we're going to create a machine that uses that volume and mounts it to the location where you want to put the model files and all that good stuff. So that looks like this. I'm going to make a curl request with my fly auth token of type JSON to our application name, the slash volumes endpoint and create a new uh, volume, right? Uh, so the Chicago region, Wispy API cache 2, size 10. Uh, the only difference here is we need to put this compute section as part of the JSON body of our request. GPU kind is exactly what we saw when we used FlyCTL, but we also need to specify a CPU kind of performance when we hit the API to create a GPU machine. Uh, in this case, we're creating the volume that we're going to mount to the GPU machine. But for the volume, we also need the CPU kind of performance. OK, so we created a volume. I'm going to hit the next API point here, which is the one to create the machine. It's the exact same thing. Uh, we have a slash machines endpoint in this case in the region ORD, uh, the same environment variables, right? So uh, the ASR model large, the ASR engine faster whisper. I don't actually need these two here. Those are auto generated from just the way I tested it out so we can get rid of those. Mounts. We have a mounts section. We'll mount this in the same location as before. You can get rid of that slash whisper if you want to mount it in just the dot cache directory. We'll paste in the volume ID there. Uh, we can name it anything I want. I'll just name it data. And then services is the same thing as those dash p flags we saw at FlyCTL, just saying the internal port is 9,000. And then we're going to have public ports at port 80 and port 443. 
and then the uh, Docker image, once again, same image we used last time. And the guest section here has just a few extra items that we need, uh, GPU kind, once again, CPU kind, just like the volume, and then also the CPUs and memory. Now, uh, when we use FlyCCL, we did not define this, so we got um, automatically added to a performance uh, 8x size, I believe, which is eight CPUs and 16 gigabytes of RAM. Here, we have to define that explicitly when we are automating this by using the API to create the machine. And that's really the only difference. Otherwise, all of it is the exact same parameters. Um, I'll have this available to you so you can see the API calls. I'll put it in like a GitHub GIST or GIST or whatever you want to call it. And that way you'll be able to automate spinning up a fly GPU machine for yourself.